the horrifying images from India keep coming. Of the desperate search to find hospital beds and of people being treated outside. The plight for so many to get oxygen to relatives where it can't be found. And of the ever increasing number of funeral pyres burning day and night. The world is starting to come to India's aid. The US has lifted export controls on the raw materials needed for India to make the vaccine and says it will start sharing vaccine doses. At the governmental level, Britain is sending urgently needed equipment and the UK's medical community is doing more, providing expertise and raising money for food distribution. We haven't had patients dying in the streets because we have been able to treat them. And I wanted the same for India. And I also am very mindful of the fact that 65,000 Indian doctors work here who all have loved ones in India. And I very much enjoy working with them. And they have propped up our NHS. They have saved lives here. And the NHS would have buckled to its knees without them. But given international medical experts were warning of an Indian surge for weeks, could the world have done more to help prevent this crisis before it happened? It's hard, as Indian health professionals have been telling us, if you have a leader who wants to claim that the virus had been overcome. But some wish a body like the WHO would have been more clear with India's leadership. These messages must go very loud and clear because there will be voices which will say, oh, the problem has ended. We have had antibody surveys saying 55% or 60% people have been tested positive for antibodies. We are out of the woods now. We can get on with life. That is where strong scientific voices from all over the world must come and say, no, this is not what happens. The World Health Organization says it's doing all it can to compel people around the world at a political level and grassroots level to take the measures needed so surges don't happen and scores of people don't die. That clearly didn't work in India. Are you, are your peers at the WHO looking at what's going on in India and feeling some sense of failure in the organisation that you weren't able to stop what's going on now because the, the methods that you were using at those different levels were ineffective? I think what we're feeling at the moment is heartbreak. Uh, but a failure of, but a failure of the organisation and the way it works and the messaging? No, no, I'm feeling a sense of heartbreak for the people in India because... But, but is there, what, I, what I'm saying, is there, is a post-mortem going on in the WHO? Are there discussions taking place about, is there any sense of guilt even that, that more could have been done? Um, those discussions about every country that's gone through this will, of course, happen. But when we're in the middle of something like this, all our energies are on doing everything we can to help. Of course, for many, the buck does have to stop with the leadership of each country. But if not with pressure, the one thing the world could help with is more vaccine equality. But there, the huge disparities have only been made worse. Now India's unable to fulfil its commitments to export doses.